I'm leaving for Canada in just about a week and was updating the website here, destinationhyperborea.com, with the route that I'll be taking. The first stop is in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and the last one up here at Ward Hunt Island. Here it is on Google Earth from Moose Jaw, Prince Albert, Wollaston Lake, Baker Lake, Goja Haven, Resolute. Uh, probably stop here because I'm definitely going to Devon Island, a.k.a. Mars. But the last stop is Ward Hunt Island. And, uh, you know, Ward Hunt Island is in the middle of nowhere. It's at the very northern tip. There's practically nothing here. It was briefly a weather station. But since then, it's been used for the starting point for a number of attempts to reach the North Pole, uh, beginning with Ralph Playstead in 1968 with his uh, snowmobile expedition to the North Pole. And there's basically nothing on this island. There's a little airstrip so they can land and drop off supplies for the uh, North Pole expeditions. But here's, you know, field camp. Here's here's what it looks like out on Ward Hunt Island. And wouldn't you know, but the Prime Minister of Canada in 1975 took his three-year-old son, Justin Trudeau, and Alexander Trudeau, uh, took him to this island. So... Justin Trudeau's first visit to the high Arctic as a three-year-old. And the reason they, they even know this happened is because some uh, Canadian scientist found the plaque that says that Pierre, the prime minister of Canada and his son, Justin were here in 1975. Now, if anybody else would, would have done this, taking a three-year-old child into the high Arctic, uh, to a place where basically there's, you know, uh, it could even be life-threatening to stay out here for f- for adults, let alone a three-year-old child. But the big question is, what in the world is the Prime Minister of Canada taking a three-year-old up to Ward Hunt Island for? What would be the purpose of that? And there's really no answer to the question other than they're making a stop. Of course, not uh, not at water. But my map being a little bit more accurate that they made a stop at Ward Hunt Island because they were on their way to a nice retreat, probably where the weather is good, just a little bit further to the north. And that's the only point I'm going to be making in this video is that there is absolutely no reason that the Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Trudeau, would take his sons, including his three-year-old son, into the furthest northest reach of the Arctic. I mean, the the child could barely walk at this point, but I can see no other answer for why this trip would have been made other than if they were going to go to uh, somewhere for a nice vacation. And there is no place to go for a nice vacation all the way up here except the theoretical Islands of uh, Hyperborea, which only our historians say exists, and according to modern Masonic maps like Google Earth, we get this, which we should all know is a complete fake because it shows water uh, when there is nothing but ice up here. So this is a complete CGI, and if you're curious just how far north we can see from satellite imagery, let's go take a peek. Okay, so here I've put a point on the map, and it's at 78 degrees north. And if we zoom in at this point, we actually get just a sliver. Let me turn off the grid. Just a sliver of real photography. And you can see the fake blue ocean that doesn't exist and the uh, factual ice, which has been photographed. Now, one thing to take note here is that there is some type of man-made perfectly straight line with these dots. They look kind of like rivets or something like that. And if you draw a line, you can see there it continues on down here. Uh, It's a perfectly straight line. And with this grid-like pattern, I uh, I highly doubt that it's something which is uh, created by nature when we have this uh, repeating pattern of looks like rivets in a perfectly straight line. It's indication of man-made, you know, something going on with this interesting little area here. But beyond that, we can see right here there is actually satellite imagery of the north at 78 degrees. And there's just a tiny sliver of it. You you actually can't really see it until you zoom way in. Also going to point out that 
I don't know what these are, but they look like tire tracks. The problem is they're far too big for that. And uh, on the ocean floor, and they seem to make these, you know, uh, turns. You know, here we get a 90 degree turn and then a, another turn up this way. And this area where he turned here, came down and went up. It almost looks as if there's some kind of a buried building right here. Uh, you could see a 90 degree angle and perfectly straight walls right here. Um, almost looks like there's another building underneath of it here. So I'm not sure if this is a submerged building, but it certainly looks like remnants of a lost civilization. And if uh, it looks like a bulldozer is under the ocean just driving, driving around down here. But I'm focusing more in on the sliver of reality, um, which is becoming less and less real at this point. The There's no more ice. Now we just get these random uh, image artifacts, which isn't real satellite photography, of course, which is some Google Maps kind of, uh, you know, merging of the pixel data and, and something's gone awry. But I know the ocean isn't real, um, but... I'm having to go south now to get back down to where there is photography. You'll notice there is a massive black strip. And here the black strip ends It's and the ice begins. So it's almost like here you can see the ice and uh, the the edge of the world, you know. And, and after this, it's nothing but blackness and darkness. But But this water is fake. And we know that there's ice on the sea up there. So this little sliver is kind of a little sliver of reality. But it ends right here, and, and further north of here, we don't get this picture of this ice. So the question is, how far north does Google Maps allow us to see? And that question is answered by looking at this point right here. I'm going to turn on the map, and we're at 79 degrees north. That's as far north as we could see as far as what is at the North Pole. From this point north, it's either fake Google water or it's um, just this blackness and, and the JPEG artifacts, the you know the pixel artifacts that we had seen above, but no real photography north of 79 degrees and 35 minutes north. And to give you an idea of how much of an area that is, it is all of this. So, you know, uh, perhaps this uh, the top of Greenland is accurate satellite photography, but as far as looking at what's in this area, we're not going to be able to see it. This ocean that's created by Google is completely fake. And we can see by looking at the sliver of, of reality down here that uh, they stopped taking satellite photos of the North Pole area at 79 degrees north. So just like uh, regular everyday parents who have three-year-olds, um, you know, a normal thing for me with my three-year-olds would be just let's take you to an area that's potentially life-threatening, even for adults who are well-equipped with Arctic gear. Um, but let's take a three-year-old there. I think there's some strong evidence here that uh, something is being hidden at the North Pole. But if you have a rational explanation as to why a parent would take a three-year-old to an area like this, please put it in the comments below because I can't quite wrap my head around it.